Hey, Joe Gilder here. I want to take you on a little adventure, a little experiment, uh, and also feature something really cool that happened on our drum tracking session this month for um, my EP. So one of the cool things that happened, I was using the a Cascade Fathead ribbon microphone, which is gold, circular. It's a ribbon mic. It's cheap. I don't have the updated transformers. And I've used it in the last several drum tracking sessions as kind of a thick mic or a fat mic where I'll put it off the kick a little bit so it captures the kick and the snare. In this session, I wanted to capture a little bit farther away, so I moved it kind of on the other side of the room, another few feet away, and uh, was going to just let that be capture the kit, pointing at the kick and snare, so hopefully not getting too much cymbals, and just getting a really thick-sounding recording that I could blend in with everything else, okay? Um, it's always If you have an extra mic, it's always nice to throw something like that up. So... When my friend Brent came over, he's a producer engineer, he brought this box called a limb pander, which is combined the word limiter and expander. He got it's an old vintage tube thing he got on eBay for a hundred bucks. And he said it's the secret sauce for rock drums. So we patched the fat mic, that ribbon mic, through that before we recorded it. And it essentially is just this nasty, gnarly limiter that just took what I recorded and just made it disgusting. So here's what that sounded like. So just gross. Now, what does the mic sound like by itself? Well, I don't have, I didn't record a sample of that microphone before we put the limb pander on there. I tried to find it and we don't have any. So instead, I've got another mic I used on a different session. Same thing, it's that same ribbon mic placed a little bit off the kit. And here's what that sounded like. So it's a different song, so bear with me, but it has a similar vibe. So it's getting some symbols, but it's actually just getting kick and snare really well, which is cool. So what I want to do in this video is experiment to try to see if we can recreate the sound of that Lin Pander without having one. So if you are in for challenges of using the gear that you have to create cool vintage sounds, this will be fun. Will we accomplish what we're set out to do? No idea. Um, and I'm not, honestly, I kind of want one of these limb panders because they're super cool, but it'd be cool to know if I can get that sort of sound. So let's listen again to the limb pander edition. Okay, so let's just cut it off here. I'm not worried about the cymbal part as much as I am, just the kick snare part. Okay, so obviously we need some sort of gain reduction happening first. I think what makes the limb pander, I feel dumb saying it every time, it cool is it's essentially a limiter. You literally, it will not let any more signal through, um, but it, it has an expander element to it, which I think relates to the fact that it has maybe a longer release on it. So Studio One's limiter allows me to do that. So I'm just gonna bring the threshold and the ceiling down and uh, increase, let me just start that over, bring the ceiling down, which brings the threshold down to, and then just increase the input and use a pretty long release and just see kind of what happens. Let's just start there and I'll turn on soft clipping as well. So it's interesting, but it's clearly not the same sound. Here's that limb pander again. So it's clearly we're missing something. So why don't we try a little bit of distortion in front of the limiter? So let's, um, let's put this red light distortion on here. Let's make sure we're listening to the right thing, yeah. And let's just kind of see what we can do with that.
Interesting. So here's the limb pander. Okay, it's too dark. So let's, uh, maybe we can roll off some of the lows going into the distortion. There's a little bit of ringing in this one. Let's get rid of that too. I'm gonna put an EQ kind of before everything. Interesting indeed. So here's the original Limpander. We have certainly not matched it, but it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's mostly just missing some of that low end. So let's just say there's less of it. So now I want to try something different. Instead of the compressor, instead of the limiter, let's put a compressor and set it up like a limiter so we can mess with attack and release and just see if that gives us anything. So the ratio, I'll put a limiter at the end, but I'll just set it more to default settings so it doesn't get too, too crazy. Let's just bring the ceiling down a little bit. Okay. Um, and let's just see what happens here. That's kind of cool. A li letting a little more attack come through lets it get that little bit of a snap that the limp hander has on the when the when the compressor lets up a little bit and if something hits, you hear kind of that little snap come through.
Is it a perfect replica? No, it's not even close. And it's hard because obviously I should have recorded a sample of that exact drum part um, with that same mic and had a clean one and then one run through here so that I could really do a comparison. But obviously I wasn't thinking about comparisons when I was setting up for a tracking day. But case in point, if you ever want to set up a room mic and then just utterly destroy it with things like compression and limiting and uh, distortion, try it, especially if you're doing rock drums. Occasionally, if you blend that in with everything else, it gives you this kind of raw, organic kind of sound. If you don't overdo it, that can be kind of cool. And so do these sound the same? No. But there's some similarities in character. The way the, the kick and the snare get kind of sucked in and kind of slammed down, and the way the snare sounds different, um, the way the, the low end gets kind of distorted. I will say, obviously, I still like the, the Limpander set has a little more truer low end. It has kind of a warmth to it that's not here. And if we introduce more EQ back in, it ends up just being more thick and muddy than it does sounding good. But cutting the upper mids made it sound actually kind of cool. Again, it's not a fair comparison. The bottom one, the mic was closer, captured more low end, whereas this one, the, the mic was a good eight feet away from the kid, a little farther away than the first than the second one. So it had less low end to deal with anyway. But anyway, really cool box. If you go, if you can go Google Limb Pander and just check it out, it's a cool looking box. It's just got an input and output knob. Input, how much are we going to slam it? Output, what's that final output level? And it will not go above that. It's pretty cool. But um, if you don't want one of those, don't have the budget for one of those, or just don't care to get one, try your own experiment here. Try to take tools that you have available to you, and maybe run it out through your guitar pedal board. I mean, there's so many options of things you can try, but find a good room mic, and uh, then try to just mess with it, and mess it up, and then blend it in with the original drums. I think you'll find it can be a very, very, very cool thing. Obviously, you're not hearing it in the context of the mix, and that wasn't the point of today's video, but I had fun messing around with it and doing some science experiments, and I hope you enjoyed it too. All right, that's it. See ya.